Okay. Let's read verse 10 again. And the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where ye can find it. Yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So you get straw where you can find it, but you better not stop bringing forth the amount of bricks that you made when we gave you straw. But well, we got to find our own. And still produce the same amount. Go ye, get your straw where ye can find it. Yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmaster hastened them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today, as heretofore? Beat them. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There was no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, Make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. But he said, Ye are idle. Ye are idle. Therefore he, ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Most High. Go therefore now and work. For there shall no straw be given you. Yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks, the amount of bricks that you're supposed to make without us giving you straw. You find a straw, whatever you're going to find yourself. Make it hard. On we the children of Israel. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case. After it was said, You shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily tasks. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The most I look upon you. And judge, because ye have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. They blaming Moses and Aaron. What is harder labor that we had to do because them going to Pharaoh saying, let my people go. Then Moses said, hey, they can do a feast to me in the wilderness. And Moses returned unto the Moses and said, most high, wherefore hast thou so evil to treated this people. Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in, his, in thy name, he have done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Hmm. So, let's look at uh, let's look at the definition of ham from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary so you understand that and it's from Zondervan, Compact Bible Dictionary. Zondervan Compact Dictionary. Let's look up Ham and show you what the scholars know. Get right to the point. Say Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably around about 96, excuse me, 96 years before the flood. And one of the eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races. Well, everybody was dark. Not the Negroes. You hear that? He became the progenitor of the dark races. Not the Negroes. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Not the Negroes. You hear that? Not us. <coughs> but who? But the Egyptians. These are all so-called Africans. Egyptians, that's who we in captivity under for 80 years that we're reading about. Ethiopians, we're under the Babylonians. Libyans, North Africans, and Canaanites. See? Those are the ones that created the all the African people. 
Let's look at Exodus, <clears throat> the 11th chapter. Exodus 11, 6 and 7. We've proven that we're not African. Exodus 11, chapter. <clears throat> Verse 6 and 7. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. All the land of Egypt. Such as there was none like it. Nor shall be like it anymore. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that you may know how the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. You see that? The most high make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So now you see here say, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. So what does that have the significance of a dog moving his tongue? If you look at a dog, actual dog moving his tongue, what does that have to do with anything? But you got to look at what that dog means within that scripture. <laughs> Because he said, shall not a dog move his tongue, right? So let's look at, I think I had an Unger's Bible Dictionary. Oh, here it is, right here, real close. And I brought it out before. I want to bring it out again because it might be someone that's just tuning in to this great information. So this is the new Unger's Bible Dictionary, you see. It's, I looked at the word dog, it says, in the East, dog is used for impure and profane persons. It was used by the Jews respecting the Gentiles. You see? Verse 5, or number 5. Those who are shed out of the kingdom of heaven are also called dogs. Revelation 22 and 15. On account of their vileness... Probably a reference to homosexuality. Now that's what they wrote. So you got to deal with who it is that's the author of the New Unger's Bible Dictionary. So this is a word that we use pertaining to these other nations. As the Most High Sin. Exodus 11 and 7, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Speaking of these other nations, against man or beast, that ye may know how the Most High does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So there's a difference, y'all, between the Egyptians and we the Israelites. But we're not from Ham, as they know, as we read in the Design of Compact Bible Dictionary, but we're from Shem. Listen what it says in, uh, go to Exodus 7 chapter. Let's start at verse 1. And it says, and reads, and the Most High said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. So, because the Most High told Moses, but Moses came with an excuse. I can't talk. I stutter. I can't talk. I can't speak. Very well. Say that's all right. Let your brother Aaron be your mouthpiece. So I'm gonna tell you what it is. 
And you tell Aaron, and Aaron gonna go in there and speak for you. But listen to what he said he gonna do. Verse 3. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. The heart is the mind, the way you think. So you're gonna harden the way Pharaoh think. His heart. And multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. This is all to get the most high name. Like he's gonna do in these last days. It's gonna be all about him. So he's forgotten about. Most people thinking about themselves. You better understand, this is all about the most high. Because in the end, I'm check up shy. Once he ruled for a thousand years, he's gonna be subject to the most high, and the most high gonna be all in all. Forever and ever and ever. Understand, overstand that. So you want to rehearse something, you better rehearse the most high whose name is jealous. And understand. And understand more of how he have brought us to this condition because we did what we did against him. He said, follow me, yeah, I'll set you above all nations. Everybody don't bow down to you. But no, we want to be like them, so now we bowing down to them. Like he told us he's going to do us. From one captivity to the next captivity to the next captivity. We in captivity, he telling us, hey, you follow me, you ain't got to go here. But if you don't, this is what's going to happen. Over and over and over and over and over again, we chose to be wicked and evil and wretched rather than to follow him and rule the world. They rule, everybody ruling because of us. And they know this. They know we're in a captivity slave bondage because we broke the Most High's laws, his rules and regulations. And now they're telling you ain't none of his laws. Think about that. They know this, and they're telling our people in these different religions that you ain't got to follow his laws. What religion you can name that's keeping the moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremony laws, and kept the sacrificial laws? They recognize that Mashiach Abishai came and disannulled the sacrificial law with his precious blood being shed because no mission of sin without the shedding of blood. His blood was shed. What religion? Name them. That's getting ready for to follow the holy days of the Most High. Name them. If thou can. That's why this is for us. And I know y'all gonna say the Jewish people, they got the Talmud and the Kabbalah. You better check that out. All we need is this. What we reading from. That's it. And everything else got to be compared to this. The Bible. But where they at that's really bringing this truth out? What religion? Name them. That's why the most I say he hardened Pharaoh's heart. To get him a name. Like he gonna do in this last days when he's telling myself, I'm saying, go judge and make war. And he's coming under the power of the Most High. To do in all these kingdoms and set up righteousness on this earth. But it's gonna be a remnant of us, the children of Israel, and these other nations. As it is written. And they're gonna be judged because they have not been judged. You gotta make sure you understand this. Overstand this. Go to Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Because I don't like to make statements and can't prove it. And if you need proof of what I'm saying, just ask. Psalms 147, 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel, the Israelites. This is what he said. He have not dealt so with any nation. So his word his statutes and his judgments were not given to any other nation but the Israelites. Why, he is the power of Israel. He is the power of Israel. Period. So lock you. Once again. Psalms 147, 19 to 20 said, He show up his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, to the Israelites. He have not dealt so with any nation. So no nation had the most I gave his word to. No nation had the most I gave his statutes and judgments to. Listen, he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, which means what? The punishments for breaking the most high's laws? They have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. You see? So, the judgment got to come. 
to them because everything has been set up around us, the Israelites, in this world. Because the Most High, look, understand and understand this. Go to Daniel 4.17. They can't do nothing, but what are you allowed them to do? Daniel 4, 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living, we the living, may know that the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, ruleth where? In the kingdom of men. He ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to, give it, these kingdoms of men, to whomsoever he will. Whoever the most I want to, and set up, up over it the basis of men. That's where we at now. And they telling you that. They tell you that. Huh? It's not something I gotta make up, but you think I'm saying something that's off because they got the word Caucasian. It says, over oh, pertaining to the Caucasus mountain range. It says Caucasoid. Look up Caucasoid. It says, a member of a subspecies of mankind. He set up over it the basis of men, a member of a subspecies of mankind. That's why he's below all mankind. That's what they wrote in the Webster's Unabridged Encyclopedia Dictionary. So you got to deal with that. So let's go back to the a book called The Babylon, the Temple 2, by Rudolph R. Winsor, a historian. And we're going to read on page 90. Y'all bear with me because I haven't done this in years, but... All praise to the most high of spirit is working with me to bring this forth to you. Uh, that's why I give all praise and credit to the most high. Now look, this is from Babylon to Timber 2 by Rudolf R. Winsor. It says, on page 90, it says, The Jews imported into the western part of Africa a superior material, educational and moral culture soon after 300 A.D. It says, the black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes or the Hamites. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the black Jewish, it says, but you know, we know we the Israelites, culture, the Jews were not observed into the auto, autochthonous population amongst the Africans. In fact, the Jews observed some of the native tribes. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrious and skillful people. And the Jewish, I don't like that word, I like to say Jew, but he got Jewish, which I, I say should mean pertaining to being like, so they might, he might have put that so that his book could be published, you know what I mean? But we know that it's the Israelite, Garganian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, judges, architects, Engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, jewelers, sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculturists, etc., etc. And you know we were heavy in music. You get your songs, that's all songs by King David. He played the violin, which is now is the piano, with keys on it. I mean, those are songs. So you know we were involved with that, bringing forth like they copy everything that we've done in music today. Still behind uh, Lionel Hampton and learn how to play jazz. One on this side, one on that side, one on that side. You watch his hands and he's playing the vibes. Boom, 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 boom. They, they learn what they learn. Chuck Berry and Elvis Presley, you know? Jackson 5 and the Osmond brothers. You name it. All the way to Eminem. 
and Snoop Dogg and all the rest of the rappers. You see? So, <laughs> it is what it is. What well, the most I said in, uh, go to Deuteronomy 7th chapter. Speaking of that, in the spirit. Uh, most I said, in Deuteronomy 7th chapter, he said, verse 6, he said, For thou art an holy people unto the Most High thy power. The Most High thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. But look what he said. Go jump up to verse 1. When the Most High thy power shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and cast out many nations before thee. When y'all talk about the most I love these nations, look what he's saying. He cast these nations out. The Hittites, these are all so-called Africans, Hamites. The Hittites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Seven nations greater and mightier than thou. This is our power. He said these nations were greater and mightier than I. But what did he say he's going to do? When the most high thy power shall bring thee into the land of whether thou goest to possess it and cast out many nations before thee. The same thing he's going to do in this, these kingdoms. He ruled in the kingdoms of, of, of man and he's going to cast them out. The superpower of the earth going to be cast out. The superpowers of the earth going to be cast out. That's why I say, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. We got next forever and ever and ever. We just got to work toward what it's going to take to have that next. To please the Most High. That would be worthy to go into a righteous kingdom. This is what he said. And when the Most High died, power, verse 2, shall deliver them, these seven nations, mightier and greater than us. And when the Most High died, power, shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. Hear what he said? When he delivered them before us, he tells us to kill them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant, don't make no agreement, no contracts with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall thou take marriages, this is showing that the Most High is not with interracial marriages, y'all. Neither shall thou make marriages with them, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Most High not with interracial marriages. Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. That's why you read Psalm 96 and 5. For all the nations, all the gods of the nations are idols. Say, but the Most High made the heavens because nations are following and worshiping the sun, the moon, the stars, the comets, you name it. Anything up in the sky, they worshiping it. Except for the Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. We became the Israelites. And the Most High is the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's his name forever, the memorial to all generations. So if you're not of the 12 tribes of Israel, then he's not your power. You just heard him say he went down to Egypt where he heard a language that he didn't understand. That's how much he cared about them. He don't care nothing about nobody else, but look, he only know us. Get Amos 3, 1, and 2. So you understand. What the Most High is saying here and what he's about. Without a shadow of a doubt. For real. But if you go through the uh, chosen scriptures, then you'll see all of this. It's all here. Amos 3 1 and 2. Let's see what it says. Hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. That's what we're looking at. That's where we've been. In Egypt. Saying, what? You only 
have I known of all the families of the earth. I'm going to shoot it again. This from the Most High. You got to take it up with the Most High. And you got a problem with this. Because he said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you, we as the Israelites, for all your iniquities, for all our wickedness. But oh boy. You want to hear some good news? Let's look at some good news for us now. As we strive to be perfect. As the Most High is laboring to make us perfect. His grape and his plant. Look at Lamentation 4.22. Because it's going to come down. Just the way it is. Prophecy. The punishment of thine iniquity, our wickedness, is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, O twelve tribes of Israel. A remnant, mind you, one third, we talking to. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. So when you read of the curses, Deuteronomy 28 chapter from 15 to 68, and verse 68 says, this is the last captivity we were going to. That's the last verse. What does it say? And the most I shall send thee into Egypt, which means captivity, slavery, and bondage, again, another time, like we in Egypt, in this lesson, you know this, and you know this. Again, another time, how? With ships. By the way, where I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. As a nation, we ain't seen our homeland of Israel again. And there, when you go on these ships, you're going to be sold unto your enemies. Not your friends, but to your enemies. For what? For bond men, slave men, and bond women. Slave women. And we were sold on auction blocks for years and years and years, hundreds of years. And no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem or save us from the condition that the Most High put us in. Because we broke his laws. We broke his rules and regulations. And we still told we ain't got to follow him. Now tell me you're going to tell me any way, shape, or form that you, are, that's a Christian or whatever religion you're dealing with, talking about we ain't under his law. We ain't under the law. Whose laws are they? Who took the time to give us 613 laws? Well, I'm telling y'all, we have been disrespectful to the Most High over and over again. And who really care? You're going to care because he's going to show up and show out. Y'all like to say that, right? Wait till he show up and show out on your butt. Because you don't really care. You don't know him. You ain't trying to know him. That's why his name is Jealous. You got all these other things that's more important than him. Oh, but he's going to be, he's going to get a name. Believe that. His name going to be exalted forever and ever and ever. That was just all about. It ain't about us. He said he could told Moses, I'd kill all of them. All of us, the Israelites, and raise up people through Moses. To Moses. Then he came back and told John the Baptist. John the Baptist said, hey, Moses said he could raise up some stones to gain rocks to be his people. And here we are. Don't get high-minded. I don't care how you look at it. I'm as humble as can be before the Most High. Because I fear the Most High. And you got to fear him too. If you don't fear him, you going to fear him. <laughs> Most High can thunder so loud. Like he, he like when we, we was at the edge of the mountain. He told him, he made a line, said, you, you better not come across that line. I'm going to kill every last one of them that come across that line. That's who we serve. And he started thundering. And the volcano, the, the, the mountain started smoking. And the horn, the trumpets blowing, and all that was loud. It scared us. He said, we don't talk to, we don't want to talk to Most High Moses. We don't talk to you. I said, now they're going to bow down to man, right? They want to bow down to the Most High, but you're going to bow down one way or another. You're going to bow down now, you're going to bow down later, but you, every knee going to bow. Believe this. Only heads up. That's why he said, hey, the punishment of dying in iniquity for the one-third of the 12 tribes that's going to fear the most high, cry to the most high. For all oppression that we've dealing, been dealing with and still dealing with. You say, surely oppression make a wise man mad, right? So what you going to do about it? So you mad, what you going to do about it? You better find out what it's going to do, what we need to do to please the most high before it's too late. He visited us. He visited us. And whether you know it or not, I wake up this morning, man, brother, wife done died, man. Look in the barrier. Every day, man. We're leaving up out of here. Family members. Gone. He visited us. 
You better find out what pleases him. Get off your high horses because you ain't got no high horse. Mosiah he said he hate a poor man that's prideful. Listen. For the one third of the twelve tribes of Israel that's going to come back to him. The punishment of dying iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. Zion, when he said, and no man shall buy thee, that means ain't, nobody gonna ain't no man going to redeem us. All, a lot of y'all caught up in man. And not the most high. He know everything being recorded in the books. And when the books is open, oh, you're going to find out then. Oh, yeah. We're going to find out who it is that really loved him. Who really cared about him. Who really felt him. Who really, who really felt about what, how he felt. He said he cried. But now nah, we're too prideful to cry to him behind all the oppression that our people are going through. And the suffering. And the death, that hurts. But if you don't feel anything, hey, why should he save you? He ain't talking to you. When it says the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, because the judgment coming. You will be judged by your thoughts, by your speech, and by your actions. All of us. I'm saying you better start with me first. I understand this, so I can't be talking about it and not operating in it. I'd be a hypocrite. So I'm telling you, listen, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He said, he will visit thine iniquity. He's going to visit your iniquity, your wickedness, your evil. Oh, daughter of Edom, because Edom is going to be the last kingdom, the superpower of the earth, as it says in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob, who's the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, is the beginning of it that followeth. We got next forever and ever and ever. The Israelites, one third, mind you. He said, he will visit thine iniquity. He will visit the wickedness, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. He will discover your sins. And most I said, don't do this, you're doing it. You can do this, you don't do it. You do opposite. Because he made you for a certain purpose. Proverbs 16 and 4. And all these other nations, including Egyptians, including the Af so called Africans, Hamites, they all following suit with him. Proverbs 16 and 4. The most I have made all things for himself, yeah, even the wicked for what? The day of evil. So y'all want some evil? He said, hey, he made them for the day of evil. As I read Job 9, 24, says, for the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He who is the wicked covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, who, where and who is he? They put their pictures in the Bible. So about white people. You know? So there it is. So now when you look at all the other nations are under who? Who the superpower of the earth? Who is it that brings sanctions and embargoes on all the lands? They don't do what they say do. You got to understand, it. police of the earth. So, why the most I say, hey, y'all better recognize <laughs> So now let's go back to our topic at hand. Ezekiel 20 and 13. Ezekiel the 20th chapter 13 verse. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. Most I brought us out of the captivity of the Egyptians, and we went to the wilderness and we rebelled against the Most High. They walked not in my statutes. Hear that? We didn't do what he said, do. And they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbath, they greatly polluted. Hear that? The Sabbath day. We greatly polluted. Then said I, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. You hear that? That's us. He said he's going to pour out his fury against us. That's why when you look at these nations, man, and y'all think there's no judgment going to come on them. Well, he did this to his chosen people. 
He said, I'll pour my fury out on them. They don't want to follow me. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom. He's going to set up righteousness. And you don't want to follow me. He said, hey, you're going to be perished. You're going to, he's going to destroy you. Point blank. But I rock for my name's sake. Because his name is in our name. Yah. Shar Allah. He said, but I rock for my name's sake. That it would, it should not be polluted before the heathen. Hear that? For his name's sake. Not for our name's sake, but his name's sake. That it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Amongst these Egyptians and all the other nations looking at us in captivity. From being the superpower of the earth, that's the power. Being the superpower of the earth, being brought down into captivity. Like us ruling in the Byzantine Empire of the Dark Ages. The medieval time as he would call it. And they're coming out of the Caucasus Mountains and taking us down. The last battle was battle with Constantine, Constantinople, so like it, and started to rule from 1453 to 1492. Then coming over here and taking us down here and gathering us, scattering us. We were scattered in 70 AD, but not following what he said to even the Egyptians. I mean, we ruling, but then we rule in righteousness. Why the Mosai brought us down into captivity? He ain't bring us in peace. Mosai don't do evil. Everything he do is righteous. So when we evil, then you're going to get that evil judgment. The Byzantine, I say we rule the dark ages. We rule the dark ages in righteousness. When it's Satan showed him, I shake up shine all the kingdoms in a moment of time. A moment of time, he said, all could be dying if you do what? Bow down and worship me. So we rule the, the dark ages from 90, 193 AD all the way to 1453 AD. Come on. When he ruled in righteousness, you know, Constantine want to set up this dang on. Uh, first day worship. Look at your calendar. You know what I'm talking about. The first day that everybody go to church. They all everybody celebrating then, not the Sabbath day. And if they are celebrating the Sabbath day, seventh day of business, are they following the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High? They do what He say do. Are they letting people know that they the Israelites and you do, you are this nation and that nation and this nation and that nation from the Bible? Come on. You can't use the Bible just for your purpose. You got to deal with the truth of what this Bible is talking about. This Bible in Psalms 83rd chapter say nations are the enemies and the haters of the most high. They teaching that? And naming them nations who they are? No. That is cut cut away that money. Stop their money from happening. But we as Israelites, we were rebellious against the most high. Like it was then, like we read about, and now. If you got a problem with this, you got to take it over to the most high. Because he going to visit you. He, got, he, he the one that got, got something for you. Not me.